welcome to Life with David. And today I want... Uh, um, and uh, just a moment. I guess I need to get a teleprompter. As you probably guessed, I'm not this smooth and debonair without help. I suffer from CRS syndrome. You know, can't remember uh, squat. Since I started doing videos in the 1980s, I've always needed cue cards. Recently, I've been trying to use paper copies of the script with a hole in the middle to help me out. However, this has caused me to look like I'm reading because that's what I'm doing. I'm enjoying making videos, so I think it's time to step up my game, and a teleprompter will help me get there. What is a teleprompter? Simply, it's a way to prompt a person while they're making a presentation. Anytime you've watched a presidential speech, you've seen high-powered teleprompters off to either side of the speaker. In the case of a news broadcaster, it's a camera and monitor setup that allows text to be displayed right in front of the camera for the talent to read. They work by reflecting a reversed text image off a piece of glass into the eyes of the talent. The camera then shoots the image of the talent through the glass. It seems simple enough, and I have the materials, so why don't you join me while I make a simple teleprompter for use with my videos? I'd like to spend a moment on safety. There's nothing more important than keeping you and your loved ones safe. Be sure to read, understand, and follow the safety rules for your tools. Using your tools properly will greatly reduce the risk of personal injury. And always use the appropriate eye, hearing, and respiratory personal protective equipment. In this video, we'll be using hand and power tools and we'll be working with glass. Keep your head in the game so you don't cut yourself. Now let's get started. I have a cheap Android tablet that I'm going to use as the monitor for my teleprompter. I also have an 8 by 10 inch pane of glass, some quarter inch plywood, and some black flannel fabric. My cell phone is going to act as the camera. I'm going to mount the teleprompter, including the phone, on one of my tripods, so it has to be light. I start out by measuring the tablet and the cell phone. The width of the tablet determines the height of the glass. The glass will be positioned at a 45 degree angle, so the height of the glass will be the width of the tablet divided by the cosine of 45 degrees, or 0 0.707. With that information, I designed an open-ended box that will hold the tablet, glass, and cell phone. First, I cut out the sides, top, and bottom of the box. Then I add guides to the sides to hold the glass at a 45 degree angle to the base. Next, I assemble the bottom of the box and glue the stiffeners into the bottom corners. After the glue for the bottom has hardened, I assemble the box top and glue stiffeners into the upper corners.
After the glue for the entire box is hardened, I sand the sides and corners to minimize potential splinters and to prepare for paint. Then I measure and cut the glass. Mark where you want the glass cut, then hold a straight edge along the marks. Using a little mineral spirits as a lubricant, press down on the glass cutter and scribe the line of the cut. You should hear like a ringing crinkle if the cutter is scribing the glass correctly. It should only take one time, but if there isn't a scribe line on the glass, try again. Once you see the line all the way across the glass, put a straight edge under the line and snap the glass. Now that the basic box is complete, I need to make a mount for the camera, which in this case is my cell phone. The mount is simply a couple of L-shaped wooden rails with foam added to hold the phone tightly in place. I position the rails by trial and error and then mark their location. After trimming up the backing board, I glue the rails in place. I position the cell phone as close to the glass as I can to minimize the effects of any artifacts such as dirt, dust, or scratches that might be on the glass. I also try to get the camera lens as close to the center as I can. Once the box, glass, tablet, camera mount, and camera are assembled, I determine the balance point for the teleprompter. I use the balance point to determine where to place the mount for the tripod. I don't want any excessive forces straining the adjustable joints of the tripod. Then I installed a quarter by 20 T-nut from the inside of the box to mount the teleprompter assembly to the tripod. I used a quarter by 20 bolt and a washer from the outside of the box to drive the T-nut home. I painted the inside and the outside of the box a satin black. I also lined the inside top of the box with black flannel to further reduce any reflections. In order to display the script in the proper orientation and speed, I use a free app called Elegant Teleprompter on my Android tablet. This app allows you to select the font size, screen size, color, scroll speed, mirror image, and many other parameters. In addition, I can use a Bluetooth keyboard to make adjustments to the speed and script position on the fly without having to touch the tablet. I export my script to the teleprompter app in text mode and then use the Bluetooth keyboard to set it up. Finally, I mount the teleprompter on the tripod, install the camera, which in this case is my cell phone, and put the tablet in place. Then I'm ready to record. After, of course, hair and makeup. My teleprompter worked fairly well except there was a double image, or ghosting, of the text. This is because the text image reflects from both the front and back surfaces of the glass. I could read large text okay, however I wanted to reduce the font size a little, which started to strain my 65-year-old eyes. I didn't want to invest in a piece of teleprompter beam splitter glass, since the glass would cost over $50, which was five times more than what I had in the current teleprompter. However, I read that some people have tried mirrored auto window film with mixed results. I figured I would give it a try. If it didn't work, I could just remove the film. I went to a local auto detailing company and purchased a small scrap of 20% transmission film for $4. After cleaning the glass really well several times, I thoroughly wetted everything down with water and a little baby shampoo. This helped during positioning and applying the film. 
I use a squeegee, cut off the excess film, and then use a squeegee again to set the film. After it dried, I reinstalled the glass with the film side facing the front. I was pleasantly surprised that it worked really well. The ghosting was gone, and although much less light reached the camera, it seemed to compensate for it with very little degradation in picture quality. What's ironic is that the text is not reflected off the silver side, but rather off the dark side. However, it still worked well. Thanks for joining me today. We made a teleprompter which should help me make my videos a little more professional. I'm really happy with the results. If I had to do it over, the only thing I would change would be to use a 50% transmission film on the front of the glass. However, I'm ecstatic that I don't have to print and cut up a bunch of paper to help me remember my lines. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down and leave a comment or suggestion for things to do. I hope to do more of these videos, so please subscribe and click on the bell for notifications of new videos. Let's get together next time for another day in Life with David. See you soon.